Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Nick from Silent Snow, um, and today we're going to be going over a skin retouching workflow based on Comfy UI. This workflow works for both Flux Dev um, and Stable Diffusion 1.5 models, and we're basically going to be comparing the results of the two different workflows as well as going over how the workflow works. I will not be providing the workflow as of now, but if it's something that interests you, please leave a comment and I'll be sure to respond to you if I do end up dropping it. Because um, I know that there are a lot out there, everyone's kind of got their own way of going about it, but I know that this is generally the process and just kind of wanted to share the results. So um, we'll be comparing, like I said, Flux and Stable Diffusion 1.5, but what you're looking at in front of you is obviously a photograph of President Donald Trump um, up here on the top left hand side on the top left hand side of all these comparison windows will be our base image so this image here was generated with flux dev quantize i believe it was q4 or q5 along with fp8 and obviously all your clips and vaes and all that such um and and one of the things that we're going to find when we actually go to the examples aside from this image is that having a good base image will almost always help the end result. And again, we'll see that in a few minutes, but we've got our top generated image here. So not horrible, but we've got a lot of the shiny, plasticky kind of effect, right? And even though this would convince most grandmothers, grandfathers that this is Donald Trump, uh, it can always be improved. So that's our base image. Again, we've got it pulled up right here. And so as we come across, you'll see the effects of the skin refiner. So we can see it's kind of smoothed out and distributed the lighting across the face, making it more rough than is tip, you know, originally displayed. We can see some chapping happening to the lips. We see a more consistent redness across the face that's consistent with the scene. You know, it's even adding some where it's not wasn't previously determined. And above all else, we can see that the face is being made maintained. The expression isn't changing. That's still, you know, President Donald Trump. It is just the skin artifacts that are being adjusted and for the better, um, including hair as well, even, even some hair effects um, included here. So we can go ahead and start moving through the examples. So as we go through these, there are only three examples here. We've got Stable Diffusion 1.5 based skin refinement workflow on the left, and then a Flux Dev Q4, Q5 based workflow here on the right. Um, and I wanted to start off with kind of the, the, the main image when it comes to plastic skin and, and kind of a good example image of, of what is typically meant by plastic skin. So this is a very popular image that has been used for skin refinement workflows as far as I can see across Reddit threads and such. Uh, you may have seen this picture before, but we can see kind of a very plasticky, almost 3D Barbie doll effect happening here, right? So I've just got this young model. Um, we can see kind of like some detail on the lips but really not enough the skin is way too smooth and consistent and even though that does is kind of a trend with you know uh, makeup photography photos and such um, there's still a little bit more depth than is being let on here so we'll start with the stable diffusion 1.5 version so right now we have our default base image on the screen and when it comes to stable diffusion 1.5 with this workflow it does a pretty good job um, again it, it it's going to be tough with an image like this just because we're trying to bring detail to things that don't necessarily exist and introduce detail to things that don't exist, if that makes sense. Um, but we can see it does a pretty good job. There's a little artifacting on the eyes here, but that's okay. That's nothing that, you know, kind of can't be fixed or when you zoom out, nothing that can't necessarily be ignored at the first glance of an eye. Uh, we see some development to the lips, but honestly, some kind of weird stuff happening around the teeth. But overall, not a bad result. Uh, definitely a much improved version over the original. Um, much more, much more depth, much more life. Uh, definitely feels more alive, at least in my opinion, than the original. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, again, not perfect, but I think these next results will kind of show that the Stable Diffusion 1.5 does have some pretty good improvement. But on the kind of flip side of the coin, we also have the Flux workflow, which in this case doesn't do as good of a job. We still see, you know, kind of some development, a little more highlighting around the lips. Um, it kind of seems like it took a more 
marketing approach with the picture and still kind of maintained the uh, plasticky face. So overall, not great. And I think that's kind of one of the limitations of this workflow and skin workflows overall, that they kind of have a hard time um, with with really plasticky faces. I mean, they can they do a good job at introducing new stuff occasionally. Um, but when it comes to your base image being like super plasticky, it's really tough to kind of break out of that. But if you have an image that's kind of decent enough right out of the gate with its existing blemishes, kind of some little spots here, 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 um, some good chapping around the lips, things like that, um, you can get a pretty good result, especially like we've got some good boost, uh, some good goosebumps, excuse me, uh, on the shoulders, um, some good light wraps. So again, this is our base image here, but with the refiner, you'll see how big of a difference this can really make. Um, it's, you know, it seems marginal, but when you start putting this through an image to video, which is, um, I assume the end goal, uh, typically of workflows like this, especially when you're upscaling, I think to this height or going for this level of realism, there's, there's some sort of, of goal of convincing there, right? So I think even though that this is kind of a marginal improvement, it's, it's enough to really help sell the realism, especially around the lips. If you know, this is an upscaled result, I believe it goes up to like 3k or something like that, or 4k. So obviously when you down downscale this to 16 by nine, your typical 1080 by 1920 or 1920 by 1080, whatever it may be, it's going to look extremely realistic. Um, so again, the stable diffusion workflow looking pretty good, but then equally same thing with the flux, right? Um, I think we actually have a little bit better consistency in terms of detail with flux than we do with stable diffusion 1.5. Um, our stable diffusion 1.5 generations almost feel a little bit blurry, even upscaled, but the flux ones stay pretty consistent. But so there are pros and cons to both, right? Um, it's dependent on your hardware, it's dependent on what you're trying to do. I mean, I think in this case for me running on a 3060 Ti i9, by the way, um, I th which 3060 Ti, by the way, for those who don't know, has eight gigs of VRAM. For me, it's it's beneficial to run both actually and see what the better result is. Like in this case, I'd be fine using either result. I wouldn't you know complain about either one. But it, it's truly dependent on what you're trying to do. And I think one thing I want to highlight too with the upscaling is we can see details being brought back to life in the clothing and the yarn and the hair. Um, so definitely definitely does the job and does it well. But the last one that I want to show, and, and really the true benefit I think, is also not just skin refinement, but face refinement in general. Um, especially if you have a Laura that's, you know, I want to integrate Ace++, IP adapter, Reactor, any of those things into this workflow, but as of right now, that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, maybe control net might work, but um, if you have a Laura it, um, with this workflow, for example, with Donald Trump, you can actually leverage that LoRa to create better results. So in this particular case, I actually wasn't using a LoRa for the Stable Diffusion 1.5 generations when it comes to this particular image. I just was too lazy to go find a Donald Trump LoRa, but when we look at the Flux one, that one does have a Trump-based Flux LoRa applied. Um, but even then with the Stable Diffusion 1.5, like it doesn't do a bad job. I think with Allura, it would have been a little bit better. Like that's still Donald Trump and it indisputably brings life back to the face, which I think is exactly what we're looking for, right? Especially like with the chin down here, it's, you know, refines it and then upscales it, which is, it, I mean, it looks great. There's, there's no kind of sneaking around that. But the problem comes in when you try an upscale compressed artifacts right because it's not sure how to like upscale that really or it just upscales it as artifacts so that's kind of what we're seeing here is low res artifacting on an upscaled high res image so that can be kind of jarring too but it's so small you can't really even tell that it's there so on the stable diffusion 1.5 side still not bad but i mean i think the flux one does a great job it obviously overkills it a little bit with the sharpen but maybe that's something that can be done in post there's some weird stuff happening to the eyes um, that needs to be adjusted so i would say the one limitation to this workflow is that your image should probably be upscaled going in to avoid this type of kind of eye issues so that the uh, model has a good understanding of where it should be doing stuff essentially and generating but kind of generally looking at the workflow we'll start from the beginning um, 
I'm not going to break it down node by node for you. Um, if you're interested in this workflow, please leave a comment and I will make sure to reply when or if I do drop this after it's been like fully completed and after I've heard additional kind of third party perspectives, but generally showing how it works. And this is if you know if you're familiar with Comfy UI, which if you're still listening to this right now, you likely are, you should be able to figure this out. Um, these are all nodes taken from various videos that you've probably already watched if you're watching this. So um not going node by node let me know if you want it um, but this is the process so we have our base generation the image dimensions are taken from that and then we create a mask of that image with the hair the face the skin and that's one thing that I've noticed with a lot of other skin refinement workflows is they're all very consolidated to the face whereas I wanted to focus on skin as a whole and sure enough this workflow does do that it brings life like we looked at back to the um, even like threads and yarn and stuff like that right so uh, we'll create our mask then we basically create our top layer of the image based on that mask um, which in this case is a stable diffusion generation on top so we can see that the face is still being maintained the key here is to use a lo low denoise strength to make sure that you're matching the image and this is something that you'll want to mess with so then we select what we want composited basically back onto the image and this is our result. Then finally, we throw it through an upscaler and we get this versus um, our original image here on the left. So again, it's a marginal difference, right? It's, it's not much, but even at a subtle glance, it is, a not, it is enough to be convincing of a highly real photograph on the right versus the image on the left. Um, but overall, this is the current workflow. If there are any particular thoughts that you have during this video, um, let me know and I'll be sure to take a look at it as soon as I can. But that's all we've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll, we'll see you next time.